Hey Long Care Nation, in this video we're going to do a review of the Honda HRC216. Coming up. So hey Long Care Nation, in this video we're going to be doing a long term review of the Honda HRC216. So as you can see uh, before me here, I've got two of the uh, mowers in front of me. Uh, Right here on uh, this side uh, is the very first uh, Honda HRC216 uh, that I purchased back in 2005. And I actually used this actual mower here that you see uh, for 10 years in my lawn care business, uh, mowing about 80% of my client lawns uh, over that 10 year period, as uh, most of the lawns I do here are in the dense city and they're smaller uh, type lawns. So uh, this uh, unit I use for 10 years. Uh, on this side here uh, is the newest uh, version of the HRC216 that I have. Uh, I purchased uh, this particular mower here uh, in uh, 2017. Uh, so uh, this one has uh, about two years uh, of use on it. Uh, and this was the third uh, version or third mower uh, that I had purchased. So like I said, I started off uh, with this particular mower here. And I use it every day, day in and day out uh, for my uh, regular uh, mowing, whether it was tall grass, whether it was weekly cuts, bi-weekly cuts, and even 10 day cuts back then uh, when I started. Uh, and I use this predominantly uh, as my main mower. Now over the course of the 10 years, as a lot of you guys know, I do a lot of mowing uh, in the rain uh, and uh, the uh, unit itself uh, was uh, really really bulletproof this was a fantastic mower i was so pleased with this uh, particular unit but over time uh, it started to get uh, very very rusty but, uh, i had to start welding uh, patches and welding areas in here uh, to keep uh, the mower from basically falling apart and i decided at that point at that 10 year period uh, that uh, the mower didn't owe me anything and it was time to uh, you know get a new replacement so in 2015 um, I decided to purchase another one of these uh, HRC 216s and immediately with that uh, second mower I started to experience uh, some issues it was pretty good uh, the first few months but started to have some uh, issues uh, that we'll get into uh, as the video progresses uh, but fast forward um, a few months later and uh, as uh, some of you guys may know uh, my trailer got stolen along with all the equipment including including that second uh, Honda HRC 216. And at the time I thought, well, if there's any silver lining uh, to the fact that my equipment got stolen, uh, it would be that I would be getting another Honda HRC 216. And hopefully uh, this third one wouldn't experience uh, those same issues uh, that that second one did. Uh, but uh, as I've gone along the last two years with this mower, not only has it experienced uh, some issues, um, but it's been the exact same issues as that second mower uh, that I had uh, purchased uh, two years previously. So, okay, so some of the uh, issues that I've been experiencing with the last two versions of this Honda HRC216 is uh, number one, uh, this front uh, left tire here. When you put it on hard pavement, uh, it doesn't touch the ground. So the other three uh, will be on the ground and that one uh, can essentially be free spinning uh, on hard pavement and it doesn't actually uh, touch the surface. Uh, something I thought that was isolated to that first or second uh, Honda mower that I bought. Uh, but then when I got this third one, uh, it was doing the exact same thing. Uh, another thing that I experienced is that uh, along uh, this side of the mower, uh, on the left side uh, when you're standing behind it. Um, it seems to leave what I call uh, corn rows of sort of just uncut grass, uh, basically like a strip of uh, uncut grass that kind of stands up uh, only on this side and you have to end up uh, double cutting uh, a lot of lawns in uh, those situations. Um, another, th another thing that I've noticed is that it also seems um, or feels like uh, the deck is not level on those last two uh, versions of this mower and that uh, on the right side it kind of seems to scalp lawns while leaving those corn rows on the left side so basically kind of feels like uh, it's not level uh, another thing that happens uh, uh, within or after the first year of use is that either the cables uh, stretch um, that go up to the controls there on the handles and the self propel just becomes very very intermittent um, it is uh, sort of uh, the speed uh, just really 
really, really starts to slow down. And there's times where you are mowing a lawn and you are like just willing the thing to go. You've got a list of lawns that you've got to get through for a day and it just is going so slow uh, that it's faster for you to push it uh, than it is to use the self-propel. Uh, with the self-propel, um, it is a hydrostatic unit and it employs these little uh, round ratchet pieces uh, that have these spring-loaded little wings that kind of flip open uh, to grab onto some notches on the inside of the rim and that's what propels um, the mower forward. And as you pull the mower backwards, those uh, notches uh, spring back and they make a clicking noise um, as you uh, hit those notches as you're rolling it back. So that's a clicking noise you hear with this particular mower. But those will get uh, gummed up over time. They rust over time. The springs break uh, and uh, deems the uh, wheels completely uh, unusable. Uh, currently, uh, this original one here is uh, suffering from that on both the rear wheels so the self propel doesn't work at all the transmission actually still works but the power to the wheels uh, doesn't uh, rotate uh, not a big deal, but uh, is a fix that uh, is required uh, every year, every couple years uh, at times uh, with these depending on the conditions now with that particular scenario the one on the right side, right rear wheel, when you're standing behind it, uh, will go about twice as uh, often as the one on the left. And I think that's because of the way that the blade is uh, spinning as it cuts grass, uh, especially in wet conditions, debris, it's uh, blowing a lot of uh, debris in that uh, direction of that rear wheel uh, and uh, messes up that particular uh, little ratchet that I call them um, on that side a lot quicker. Um, Another thing uh, with these uh, newer versions, they changed uh, to this style, uh, same engine, but the, you can see that this one has a plastic uh, sort of covering and it has a regular fuel cap on it uh, that you just open. It doesn't have any sort of uh, clicking or venting or anything in this particular one, but on the newer ones they do. And this becomes an issue uh, because it clogs up in the rain. Initially, uh, this happened to me uh, in the middle of a rainstorm. I was mowing some lawns and uh, like I said, I don't have any choice. I have to mow here in the Pacific Northwest in the rain. And uh, it started acting like it was starving for fuel, like it was uh, dying for fuel. So I cracked the fuel uh, cap open and checked and there was uh, plenty of fuel in it. Uh, and uh, you know, I would start it up again, it would start running, I would, um, mow a few minutes later within three four minutes it would start to choke out and die again and uh, initially i thought it was a uh, debris or dirt in the fuel tank um, it happened so often that uh, in frustration one day i came home i actually cut uh, the fuel line i took this all apart to cut the fuel line and i installed a external uh, fuel filter uh, inline fuel filter on there the kind that you can uh, see sort of like the clear plastic and you can see the fuel filter on there and i removed uh, the internal little tiny fuel filter thinking that was the issue it started right up i continued mowing and i thought i had solved the problem but then uh, noticed that it started uh, happening again uh, later i found out that the issue is with the fuel cap itself and uh, when it rains there's some venting here on the inside uh, lip of the fuel cap and water gets drawn in there uh, when you're mowing in the rain and it clogs up uh, that uh, venting system and uh, prevents air from uh, going into the fuel tank which then stops the uh, uh, flow of fuel uh, and uh, there's not really much you can do about it except for uh, taking this out if you've got an air compressor you can kind of try to blow that out and blow any water out of there um, but as far as uh, the mowing goes, it'll continue to happen if you're mowing in the rain. Uh, this has been an issue so many times uh, in the rain that there have been times where I have literally, uh, you know, you hear the mower start to stutter. I have to crack the fuel uh, cap open uh, before I can continue. I'll close it again and then you get maybe two, three minutes again and then it starts to stutter again. And there's been times where I've been so frustrated having to do it on so many uh, yards and it's so many times on each yard uh, that I've literally 
just left the fuel cap open so that I could finish uh, mowing a lawn uh, because it just uh, would keep dying uh, without that fuel uh, cap uh, being open. So that has been a huge issue where those original ones, um, you know, didn't have that issue. Now I understand that's, you know, part of probably EPA rules of them changing this whole fuel cap and having venting systems and things like that. Um, but that's, um, just you know one of the major issues for me especially uh, with uh, having to mow uh, in the rain now another uh, big thing that i've seen as far as sort of quality control uh, with these mowers is the tires and the tire tread as you can see with this one here that i explained uh, i used for 10 years in my lawn care business uh, these tires are the originals from 2005 i've never changed the tread on them and they look almost like new on this particular mower you look at this mower here that's only two years old and the rear tires uh, especially uh, but some wear on the front but the rear tires are almost completely bald um, so that's a huge difference where this uh, mower here would have done 10x uh, the amount of lawns um, uh, you know, especially back then uh, when I was uh, using this for the majority of my lawns where I didn't have, um, you know, 36 inch mowers or other things that I could use on some backyards. This was the unit. I had some bigger mowers that did a very small handful of lawns, but this was the guy and it did so uh, much work. So to me, it's pretty uh, crazy to think that the tire tread and the compound used in 2005 is still holding up and still looks almost brand new today uh, versus this one that's only two years old uh, and is completely uh, bald. So uh, that is another huge issue with these mowers. Now, one of the other things you have to watch out uh, with these particular mowers is with the wheel adjustment uh, settings. You have to adjust uh, each of these wheels uh, separately. A lot of people report uh, that these wheel adjusters come loose over time uh, and they definitely uh, become worn out over time. Uh, so you'll be able to see here uh, just how much uh, play is uh, in those notches uh, as they wear out uh, over time. So what are some of the positives uh, with the Honda HRC 216? Well, generally they're built like tanks. They're very, very uh, heavily built, uh, which also means that they're heavy to lift if you have to. Uh, but that, uh, you know, generally means uh, that they're gonna last uh, a long time. They're gonna, uh, you know, take quite a bit of abuse as shown with this one that I had uh, for 10 years. Uh, these new ones, not sure if they'll hold up uh, just as long as uh, this original one uh, that I have here. Uh, but the overall deck construction and stuff seems to be about the same as that original, the handle construction uh, in that. Uh, it's just some other areas where it looks like uh, maybe some uh, things have been changed uh, and uh, don't uh, really stand up as well as the uh, original. Uh, but the engine on these is fantastic. Uh, the transmission, uh, in my experience, is fantastic. I've heard people uh, say that uh, you know the transmissions always go out on these but I found that it's always either um, those cables that are stretched um, that uh you know, prevent you from, uh, for example, um, if you're going to run this in this sort of a high RPM mode, it would actually require being sort of halfway through the choke area uh, for it to be running properly. And then over time, when you go and pull that uh, lever back to the stop position, uh, it no longer will stop the engine anymore in the stop position. And you have to actually reach down uh, to uh, this area here by the carburetor and uh, flick uh, where the cable connected there uh, to turn off the engine. Uh, and then those ratchets in the wheels wearing out can, can be tr contributed a lot of the time uh, to transmission complaints when in fact it's those ratchets uh, in the wheels that have uh, malfunctioned and not the actual uh, transmission. The engine on these is uh, pretty spectacular. Uh, it's got a ton of power. Uh, we'll mow through just about any condition. I have mowed uh, four foot tall grass uh, with these mowers. I've uh, trimmed it down. I've left all that grass piled up and this will go through it uh, with no problem. Your biggest um, uh, sort of downside or uh, you know the only sort of a thing that slows you down is the bag and having to uh, stop to empty the bag in those types of conditions. Uh, mulching with these mowers, it uses the uh, 
twin stacked blades. It's got a mulching blade on top of your sort of high lift blade. Uh, and uh, for mulching, that works fantastic as well uh, in a lot of different conditions. Um, for the past few years, I have been using this more with only the bottom blade. I've taken off the top blade and Honda actually sells a shim kit uh, that is basically just a piece of flat stock steel with holes drilled in it um, to take up the space of that top blade so that your bolts when you tighten them uh, can still be tightened down uh, to the proper specifications uh, and that was recommended by my dealer when I started to complain about those uh, uh, corn rows or strips of grass left they said hey remove that top blade and try with just the high lift blades and see if you get uh, some better vacuuming or suction uh, with just using uh, that one blade and it did help uh, it did uh, make a pretty big difference in uh, the bagging with just using a, a single blade. Uh, so that's how I've run the mowers now. Um, and I only put the twin blades on in the summertime uh, when I'm going to do uh, any sort of mulching with the mower. Uh, but for the rest of this season through the heavy spring, the wet, uh, in the uh, fall, um, I am using uh, just a single blade uh, with that uh, sort of a plate adapter uh, mounted uh, underneath. One of my other favorite things about the Honda mowers is the ergonomics of the handle. I find it very, very comfortable. Uh, so having the uh, blade brake clutch uh, lever up top here and then your speed control, uh, I find it just generally more comfortable to have my hands in this position uh, rather than uh, sort of a, an up top position here as well. The other thing uh, I like to do with this particular mower is over time, uh, because it does have a sort of top speed control for the uh, uh, self-propel system, I generally leave it in the uh, fastest speed and I use the lever uh, to control uh, how fast I'm going because it's actually quite comfortable to do with your thumbs. So, uh, you know, in the off position uh, with the motor running, the blades are spinning, uh, I can just take my thumb and uh, use that sort of like a gas pedal or a throttle uh, to control how fast I'm going and generally, and I can speed up and slow down really, really easily with my hands in this position. Um, to uh, control uh, how you're mowing uh, and uh, you know like I said speed up and slow down so uh, I really do enjoy uh, the mowing uh, in this handle position uh, and then uh, when you're uh, turning uh, when you get to the end of a mowing stripe uh, with a you know handles that are just at the top like the X mark handles uh, you're in this position you're going to turn it's putting a lot of strain uh, on your wrist here uh, where this uh, you know, you've got it in this side position, it just feels more uh, like you've got more strength in your wrist to be able to uh, pivot and turn uh, the mower in that direction versus up top here uh, is just not as comfortable, I find. Uh, so I really do uh, like uh, this sort of position. Uh, and uh, it reminds me of, uh, like I said, my turf tracer walk behind where it has uh, those handles up top there and you're holding it in the same uh, sort of position. Now, with the handle position, uh, one thing that that uh, does bring up and remind me of uh, something to watch out for, and that's uh, on your right hand side on the mower is uh, this bottom uh, corner here with all of the controls. Uh, when you're mowing in a forward position, you've got two sharp corners here, one here and one here on the bottom of this cable mechanism. Uh, that can be an issue uh, that I've seen uh, when mowing along uh, wooden fences like this one uh, and you get to the end and you need to turn, you can turn the mower sometimes and have this corner gouge out uh, uh, the fence and also vehicles. I've been burned by this once uh, and luckily it was only on my own vehicle uh, where I was mowing my own yard at the end of a long day of work. Uh, came home, decided to mow my own lawn, uh, was quite tired, uh, not quite paying attention. I was mowing alongside my car, uh, you know, pivoted the mower to turn uh, at the end of a stripe, not paying attention to the fact that my car was parked right here and uh, that corner got me, uh, went right down uh, to the metal on the front fender of my car, uh, put a nice deep scratch uh, in that fender uh, from that corner. So just something you have to worry about. Uh, on this side, it's not as bad. It doesn't stick out as prominent. It's a smaller tab. But on this side, there's a few areas uh, that you have to watch out for. If you're working in close proximity uh, to items that you may have to turn uh, the mower against. Now, one of the things that I actually like 
like on the newer version as opposed to the older version is the fact that they put the uh, starter cable uh, up here uh, on the handle versus uh, just on the engine itself where you would have to uh, bend down you have to put your foot uh, on the deck uh, to grab this pull cord and get it started uh, on this one uh, they've got it on the handle and what I would actually do sometimes to save time and as I'm walking and as I'm pulling it I can then just bend down grab the rope as I'm going and uh, pull on it get the engine started as I'm actually sort of in that motion of pushing uh, the mower no need to stop and uh, you know bend down uh, come around to the side and pull the cord so I do like uh, the fact that they put uh, the pull cord uh, on the newer ones a bit up higher uh, versus the uh, the older one. So one of the other nice features that they do uh, with the Hondas is that they put the fuel shut off uh, directly uh, on the carburetor here. So you can see it right here. You can see the little uh, sticker designating uh, the fuel shut off and the positions. Uh, but basically you can uh, just turn the little tab there and it directly stops the fuel directly right there inside the carburetor. So what that lets you do is it lets you take the mower then and flip it on its side. Uh, if you have to clean out the bottom of the deck, if you have to change out the blades and it basically stops the carburetor from flooding. Um, you can leave it there for uh, an hour at a time if you needed to if you were uh, uh, sharpening blades and things like that. Uh, you put it all back together, flip the mower back down on the side, push that tab and uh, you'll be able to start the engine again with no issues. Uh, some other mowers uh, will have that fuel shut off, uh, you know, somewhere along the fuel line. Uh, and I found uh, with those, uh, when you turn that fuel shut off, uh, if you uh, flip the mower over, there's still enough fuel uh, in that little bit of fuel uh, line that goes from the fuel shut off to the carburetor that it can flood the engine. Uh, it's not a huge deal or a deal breaker. Uh, it just means that when you flip the mower back on, you're not gonna be able to start it on the first or second Pull. likely it's going to take six, seven, eight uh, pulls or sometimes more uh, to clear out uh, that uh, fuel and fuel vapor and stuff that's trapped in that carburetor before uh, it can uh, start up again. Uh, but uh, on the Honda, it makes it super easy, especially if you're working in the rain, uh, where clearing out the bottom of the deck uh, is something that you have to deal with sometimes uh, two times on each property that you're servicing, uh, just to you know be able to move a mower from the backyard to the front yard without uh, tracking clumped grass that may be trapped underneath uh, on hard surfaces. So there you go guys, that is the Honda HRC 216 uh, long-term review. Uh, generally, they have been uh, really, really great mowers. Uh, and, uh, you know, this one especially, uh, if you listen to my podcast uh, from, uh, you know, years ago when I started, I was recommending this mower to absolutely everybody uh, that would ask, uh, you know, what sort of a 21-inch mower uh, they should get for their lawn care business. There was no question in my mind uh, that the Honda HRC 216 was the one to get. Uh, with the recent versions, like I said, I've just experienced a lot of uh, little frustrations, not big, uh, huge things, but a lot of little things that just get on your nerves uh, over the years, uh, like that fuel cap issue when you're mowing in the rain, uh, like the self propel system just slowing down, um, the ratchets wearing out, the tires uh, wearing out, things like that. Um, when I have the previous experience of this model, that was so, so good. Overall, like I say, a fantastic mower. Uh, still, I would put it in, uh, you know, the top, uh, probably uh, top three mowers uh, for 21-inch commercial mowers that you can buy. Um, just not sure if it's uh, in that number one position anymore. So that's it for this one, guys. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you use the Honda HRC 216 in your lawn care business and if you've experienced uh, any of the issues that I've talked about or any other issues uh, with this specific mower. So uh, if you like this type of uh, review video, I'll leave another one for you to watch up here in this corner or I'll leave one of my other videos for you to watch up here in this corner. So that's it for this one, guys. Here's to wishing you guys all overwhelming success and freedom in your lawn care business. Bye for now.